Hi traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the uh, Morning Edge webinar. I want to welcome you all. Um, it is uh, it's time. It's 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 business time. Lord, business. Now you know what I could do is I could do the um, uh, telephone operator voice on you guys this morning and make you all sick. And I, I don't know if I really want to go there because I was actually making myself sick yesterday by doing that. But since you guys are all so friendly, and I like the tone of your voice, it's only 4.30 in the morning here in Phoenix, Arizona. And boy, do I love doing analysis for you. Okay, enough of that. Um, so we're going to uh, we're going to get started with the, uh, uh, bleh, I just threw up. All right, we're going to start with the euro dollar. And as we always do, okay, so we know, we know, um, the, the longer term implications of the euro. I don't. I, I really don't need to go into this too much. You know, as long as we stay below this yellow trend line, it's still bearish. We're just doing a consolidation um, here. And and as I you know have been explaining to you guys for the last um, last couple of uh, couple of days, you know, any move back up towards 112, I'm a seller. Unfortunately, we just haven't had that opportunity. You know, if you look at yesterday's analysis, we just didn't really. Well, I mean. We did get close to 112, I guess, yesterday. My my focus was really on. <laughs> my focus was actually getting clobbered in the uh, dollar Canadian. I I'm and I have to take a step back and kind of uh, talk about yesterday for a minute. I bought the U.S. dollar Mexican peso yesterday. I bought the U.S. dollar Canadian yesterday. There's something else that I did yesterday that I totally blundered it up. I. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, uh, I got stopped out of Euro Canadian yesterday. I, I took I took a beating on. Unfortunately, you know, I, I'm trading relatively small, except my Aussie New Zealand, which, uh, as you guys know, I I bought the Aussie New Zealand on the on the gap down yesterday or uh, two days ago post RBNZ. So I mean, my cost average in the Aussie New Zealand is at 105.85. So I, uh, you know. Fortunately, I'm pretty aggressive with this position right now, and um, that really made up for all my blundering mistakes that I made yesterday because I did have some losses yesterday. And uh, so I really wasn't focused on the euro, which I actually, you know, I, I should have. But you guys know that I was waiting for a move up towards 112, and I'm like, man, I'll sell it up there if we can get there, or if we can get down to 111, I'd be a buyer. Um, we didn't quite make it up to 112, but I don't think that analysis is much different today. I, I don't. Um, I don't think that we have uh, really, um, you know, too far to go in either direction here uh, with the euro here. Let me remove this. So if, if you take a step back, you know, we have this, um, here, let me remove this one too. We have this uh, range between 112 and 110.50. We're still dealing with, now this latest move, you know, we did stop here at the 38% retracement. So that that's important because the fact of the matter is, if we break through this 111.30, which I'll I, I guess I'll write down. I, I'm gonna have to write down the same levels as yesterday. We can get to 111. So 111 is the 618, and 111.30 is like current support because. You have your 38% retracement here. If you break through that, we're gonna, you know, go back down and see 111, which is possible. You know, um, retail sales. I, I don't think the um, the the expectations today are that outlandish. Like last um, last retail sales, we had a uh, uh, a um, pretty uh, um, a pretty big expectation. Remember last last month. Uh, you know, we we had a, a pretty big expectation in uh, in retail sales, and we actually beat those expectations pretty pretty good. I'm like, woo, you know, on the core retail sales. And actually, if you look at retail sales, um, um, the actual retail sales number, we 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 came in you know really strong. Uh, today, you know, we have you know not not as lofty of expectations, and um, frankly. You know, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if we met them. You know, it's it's always hard for me to bet against the American consumer. It really is. You know, Americans like to spend. Look, look, I'm American. I live in America, and uh, Americans like to spend. I 
one of one of the best. I I, I remember. I remember. I got to tell you guys really quick. This is one of the best stories I have about the American consumer. It was my fortieth. Uh, not my fortieth. It was my twentieth high school anniversary or uh, uh, um, reunion, and I was living in Dallas at the time. And I flew back to uh, I flew back to Phoenix because I wasn't living here at that point in time. Uh, and I flew back to Phoenix to uh, go to my twenty-year, you know, high school reunion. Uh, we were in the just, you know, uh, the finance. This is post-financial crisis. Um, home prices were depleted and Arizona was hit hardest, right? And I was talking to all my friends that lived here about, you know, the financial crisis and they're like, oh yeah, no, no one pays their mortgage here. Everyone's defaulting, everybody's, you know, no one, no one's paying. And I'm like, and I remember eating at, uh, we were at this mall, this prominent mall that's, you know, in, 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 in the valley and it was packed. I mean, packed and it was like a this is like a Thursday night because it was like the pre reunion dinner or whatever anyway uh, and it was packed and people were shopping I saw sh everybody's carrying shopping bags I'm like where the hell all this money everybody's like well well no one's paying their mortgages everybody's just buying you know new iPhones and hundred and fifty dollar pairs of jeans and you know <laughs> I'm like, uh, you gotta love the American consumer. They, they, they'll, they'll skip out on their mortgage, but they definitely want to stay fashionable and buy, you know, all the new tech gadgets they can possibly buy. And you know, this was back in 2007, maybe 2008 or whatever. No, 2010, because that would have been my 20 year. Anyway, um, yeah, I was just like, I was like, man, that's crazy. Anyway. Um, yeah, so it's hard for me to bet against the American consumer, and but we could we can we could get a move down to one eleven and a move up to one twelve or one eleven ninety. That's uh, that's resistance up there. Okay, one eleven ninety. It is still bearish. Uh, overall, still a very bearish buy. All right, let's go take a look at the cable now. The cable is holding some very very important support. Um. I think most of you are aware that the pound dollar is sitting at this hundred it's a hundred twenty seven percent extension of this move here whoops wait 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 that's not correct I don't know how my numbers got, or my stuff got screwed up there but okay hundred twenty seven percent extension of this move okay which is there the 786 retracement which is there uh, of, of this entire range and as you guys may recall if you look at the daily chart and I get rid of all if, if I get rid of all the fibs we're sitting on what I consider triangle or um, um, uh, you know pennant if you will support because if there's the pennant pole of the flag you know this is the pennant, and this is the Gartley. Uh, we're we're right there. So in other words, the pound needs to recover, like today. Like it it it. There's no if and or buts about it. Because if the pound doesn't, we are at risk of trading into new trend lows. I think I said this yesterday, and I'll say it again. I mean, look, the low risk entry is to buy the pound right now. Now that's not something that I'm going to do ahead of. Uh, ahead of uh, retail sales. This is the biggest event we have for the week. Um, I don't mind being short the Aussie because you, you, you guys have seen all the charts, but I'll, see, I'll show them to you guys again. I don't mind being short the Aussie, but you know, initiating a trade right now ahead of, uh, ahead of uh, retail sales, I guess if I wanted a hedge, I could always go out and buy the pound, but I'm not a big fan of hedging. You guys know I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, if I, if I feel I'm going to be wrong, I'll just get out. But I, I think that the you know retail sales could actually be strong, and the problem with that is is if the cable breaks, it's not going to be pretty, guys. There's a lot. I, I mean, there are a lot of people buying cable down here. There are, there are. I, you know, I, I I I haven't run across one person, and and I, not like I'm paying super close attention, but I haven't paid, I haven't ran across one person that's shorting the cable right now, over the last 24, 48 hours, which is 
you know, I try to keep track as best I can to, to you know, some of the retail positioning, you know, especially more, not, not so much of like, you know, what I, FXCM does or, you know, or, but, but, uh, you know, our traders in the chat room like to post that information, which is good information. You know, our traders buying the pound here, are they sell on the pound here, you know, mostly, but I, I like, I also like to get a feeling of what the traders that like I follow on Twitter, what they're doing, because they're some of the sharper tools in the shed, not necessarily, well, some of them are, I, I, the majority of them. I follow a few people that I specifically fade every time I see them post something. Um, but for the most part, there are the people that I follow are, are sharp cookies. And so when I don't see anybody um, uh, shorting, you know, something or getting long something, it does start to concern me because I'm like, okay, now, you know, is the entire market on 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 the side, you know, and right now, I, I like I said, I haven't found anybody that's short in the cable here, because it doesn't make sense. Risk reward, it doesn't make sense. Macro, like if you think about the long term in the uh, implications of Brexit, it makes sense to be short the cable. But um, I haven't run across anybody that's doing that. So I'm going to write down 129.35. It's big, without a shadow of a doubt. It's big. Okay, it's big support. Resistance, should we get a break higher? Uh, like I said yesterday, we have to break above 130 and a quarter to really take this downside pressure off. I mean, if we if you're long, that is the level that needs to be broken. And this is still bearish, by the way. I know we're on support, but it's still bearish. You guys know it's bearish while it's below 135. Plain and simple. You know, while we're below here, it is bearish. That 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 spawns back longer term. I mean, you know, you you, you have to go back. You know. Back there. While we're below 135, it's bearish. I mean, all we're doing, you know, if you take take it into all into account, here's the weekly chart, right? This jumbled mess that we're dealing with right now, all of this, it's below a historic support. Like when I say historic support, I'm talking historic support. All this jumbled mess that we're dealing with right now, all that, see that, all that blue area, that is, we, we, all we're doing is we're just consolidating at a really bearish low level. Period. You know I, know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, but, you know, it's bullish down here. It's not breaking down, blah, blah, blah. No, we're, you know, as long as we're below 135, I mean, it's it's really hard for me to buy the cable. I, I mean, I'm going to do it at some point. You guys know I'm, I'm, I'm all about buying 125 if we can get down there. But, you know, I, I have a hard time buying the pound. And it's not say, I'm not saying I'm, I, I don't buy the pound because I'm actually long the pound Aussie right now. All right. So I'm just telling you guys that this is not that this this whole, this whole consolidation down here is not bullish by any stretch of the means. You know, this is a this is a, a a pretty prime example of you know picking bottoms. You just have to be careful. You don't wake up with smelly fingers. Okay, let's go over to the what am I doing? Oh, the Swissy. All right, so the Swissy. Again, this is one of those things that just I, I you know just irritates the heck out of me. Yesterday, I drew this for you guys yesterday, and fortunately, according to some of you, you 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 actually bought it, which is fantastic because I had my head up my rear end dealing with um, uh, I, I had my, you know dealing with like the Canadian and dealing with the the peso yesterday. I was getting you know, flipped around in those currencies. I wasn't even paying attention to the Swissy. Yesterday, we're like, okay, if the Swissy gets down to 79.10, you know, that's a 618, you got to be a buyer. We we actually went to 79.13. We actually, wait, no, the low, we went to 79.11, 79.10, and eight tenths of a pip right here. I was eight tenths of a pip off yesterday. And now we got this inverted head and shoulder pattern setting up. Um, I mean, and I missed it like a doofus. I, you know, and, I, and Jack asked me, Jack, Jack, you're you're actually asking me right now. You're like, um, 
you know, did did you buy the dollar Swiss? And no, I got caught up trading other stuff and getting my butt handed to me in the Canadian yesterday, where I missed this. <laughs> so stupid. I, I I mean, and I'm I'm upset at myself, you know, for being so stupid to remove that or to uh, to to miss that, but. You know, it is what it is, and because you guys know, I mean, I, I don't. I think I've told you every day this week. Like, I can't wait to buy the Swissy, and I keep missing to buy the Swissy because I. And then I bought it earlier this week. I bought it at the thirty-eight percent retracement. I end up getting out for a flat right there. I bought it here. I bought it here. Sold it there. Got out for a flat, and then I missed this whole thing, and I missed that move. Doofus, doofus. See, you know, it's not, you know, if you if you sit there and go, oh Blake, you know, I always make mistakes like that. Look, I make them too. I've been I've been doing this trading thing for over twenty years, and I still make mistakes. And I I, miss, I don't get everything, and I miss trades just like you. All right, it is a part of trading for sure. All right. Um, so we are at resistance right now, but if you really want to know that it's cleared, I think you have to you have to clear that spike high right there. Hold on, really quick. Let me double check something. See, this is a thirty-eight percent retracement too. See, see, see. All right. Yeah, if it gets above uh, ninety-seven seventy-five, you know, strong retail sales is going to do it. We're in a big range, but you know, strong retail sales. We get a strong retail sales, and we're going to be trading back up here early next week. And I'll more than likely be just trading the Aussie. Yep, because I'm that good. All right. Anyway, let's go over to the yen. Here's the yen. All right. Now. The yen uh, broke this down uh, down trend line, and we were talking about yesterday how you know we had to break above here or below here, and if we broke below 101, that'd be extremely bearish for the dollar yen. Uh, I did not trade the dollar yen yesterday because I was looking at the dollar Canadian, so of course I missed this move as well. So now the thing is about this yen. I think the yen's doing the what we call the unthinkable, like. You know the no way, yeah, no way, no way that thing's breaking higher. Oh yes, it is. You know, if we break 102.65, we're gonna be squeezy, squeezy right up to the top of that channel. 102.65. Okay, top of the channel. You guys know what top of the channel I'm talking about. That top of the channel. Let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of this. So yeah, we break this 102.65, we're probably heading back towards 105 again. Hey, look, stocks are strong. You know, 2200's just a hop, skip, and a jump away. In the S&P, we're, we're talking 10, 15 points, depending if you're looking at futures, cash market. 2200 seems like a, you know, a tag, you're it kind of, kind of, kind of area, you know? That, um, it, you know, we, we race up to 2200, um, uh, you know, if we raise up to 2200, we're going to be, you know, dollar yen is probably going to be right up here too. All right, support, support for the dollar yen. It's this is simple now. It's re it's really simple because you can, you can actually look at, you know, a retest of this trend line. You can look at a retest of the broken trend line here. Any move down to, you know, from here is a four hour. Any move down to 101.20, 101.15, big support. So, if we have a, sorry, if we have a retail sales that misses, by the by the way, um, from what I understand, the same same store sales were all pretty strong this week, so that that may bode well for retail sales. Just FYI. Um, if we uh, oh this is st st we're still in a bearish trend by the way just because we just because we can squeeze higher doesn't mean that that's not a bearish channel that is a bearish channel you know I, I I'm a, I'm more of a fan of doing this being a seller up here 
right? But, um, uh, you know, if we have a weak retail sales, that can take us down to support. You just need to be aware of that, that if, like, if the retail sales miss and you go, oh, I'm short in the dollar yen, if, if, if you do and it gets down to 101 and change, 101.15, you probably need to be careful being on the short side because it's been pretty strong support all week. Okay. Let's go to Canadian. Sorry, I'm yawning. It is 4:50 a.m. where I sit, and it's on Friday. I'm tired. All right, so here's the Canadian. The Canadian. I, I tried to buy it yesterday at 1:30:30. Um, stopped out at 1:29:90 or whatever, 8:89 or something. I got stopped out below here. I got stopped out of my Euro Canadian long. I turned around and went long it again yesterday, but <laughs> so frustrating. Anyway, um, yeah, and, and I'm 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 up a little bit in my Euro Canadian, but I'm I'm kind of leaving the dollar Canadian alone at the moment. Now we have trend line support coming into play. This is a daily chart. Do we draw through the through this wick to these other wicks? You know, do we go to this wick right here and then to yesterday's wick, basically right there? You know, does it take us all the way down to here? I don't know. I don't know. Um, if this is a channel, these lows are important because it's 127% extension of this move. So it's possible the dollar Canadian makes it down to 129, you know, 25 before pivoting. You know, again, this is all about U.S. news. There's no Canadian news tonight, today, unless I'm. Let me let me double check that. There is no Canadian news today. Okay, just just making sure. So it's possible, you know, on a weak retail sales number, we boop boop, you know, do that. Which, I mean, this has been this has been a pretty pretty, you know, big drop out of the Canadian. I did not expect that at all. I did not expect the dollar Canadian to drop as aggressively as it has. I didn't expect crude oil to do a bullish engulfing candle on the daily chart either. You know, that was a pretty massive move yesterday. I mean, we had a five plus percent move from the lows yesterday in the in crude oil. That's massive. Um, anyway. So a move down to uh, 129, this is 129.40 here. But can you make it all the way to 129 and a quarter? So sorry, 129, so Fridays just kill me. I'm always so tired by the end of the week. Hey, did I tell you guys, um, my, uh, my oldest son, uh, he, I'm, I'm, I'm having the talk with him today, the birds and the bees talk. We're actually, uh, I, I booked an overnight, um, uh, an overnight, uh, uh, you know, like kind of getaway for him and I. We're gonna go, you know, we're gonna we're gonna go have dinner and, you know, and and sit by the pool and, you know, have the talk. <laughs> I am Sam says, do they not learn in school? They might learn in school, but I'd rather that, uh, from a parental point of view, I'd rather him learn from me so he can always ask me because because the last thing I want I don't want my kids learning those things from school nor from his friends which nor from the internet so anyway it's gonna be it's gonna be fun unfortunately I'm gonna be like okay all right son it's uh, 7 30 it's time for me to go to bed he's gonna be like what what, are, what do you mean all right resistance now is uh, 130 we if we get above 130 in the Canadian it'll, it will start to squeeze okay all right, uh, we are in a range in the Canadian, as you can see very well. It's uh, whoops, as you can see, we're in a range. Uh, we are at risk, by the way. This is a uh, you know something we've talked about for a long time. We've had this drawn out many times before. We thought you know it might just got a, got disrupted a couple of weeks back. Uh, actually, we. Originally, we had it drawn like this, just so you know. 
we had it drawn like this, it, it's still relevant. A flag pattern still relevant, you know, in the Canadian. So anyway, all right. I'm not done yet. I am going to go get some more coffee, but when I come back, we've got the Aussie Kiwi dollar index, peso, Nordic currencies, and then we have retail sales coming down the pipe. Don't go anywhere. Thanks, everybody, for being here. TGIF, happy Friday to you. All right, traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the, <laughs> to the uh, Morning Edge webinar. So I had <laughs> chat says, chat says, uh, chat <laughs> Chad says, so so what do you do after the first two minutes and you're done? <laughs> well, no, you know, Chad, it's actually, <laughs> I have to explain, after the first two, first two minutes, what do you do for the next hour before the following two minutes? See, that's, that's the part that's tricky, you know, when, when you're talking about the birds and the bees. <laughs> I know <laughs> the first two minutes is easy. All right, it's the next sixty minutes that I have to figure out how to. Uh, anyway, okay, that's it. We can continue now. Um, <laughs> U.S. dollar, Norwegian Corona, new lows. Damn, man, uh, that's a breakdown. By the way, we'll talk about that here in a moment. Uh, let's go over to where am I at? Um, we have to go. Oh, uh, let's go over to the Kiwi. Okay, so here's the Kiwi. So the Kiwi, what a reversal yesterday, huh? I mean, this is a really, uh, I mean, very bearish price action in the Kiwi. We're, we're giving it a little bit of a recovery right now, um, but the, the, the reversal in the Kiwi was downright gnarly. I mean, it was. Um, uh, and, and, you know, I'm happy about that being long the Aussie New Zealand, obviously. But what we're dealing with right now is we're dealing with a pullback to the 618. You can see it right here, which means that today's low uh, is extremely important. Um, well, I wouldn't say today's low, but this uh, 7180, very important because if we give that up, anybody who's bullish right now, that okay. So l l l let me explain to you guys the kind of a, the anatomy of, of fibs. Just uh, I'm going to do this really fast. Um, this will be really easy to do, but okay. When you're looking at a when you're looking at Fibonacci's, all right, you got your, your 24% retracement. Which, by the way, the 24% and the 38% are what we call shallow retracement levels. So, when you when you have a move and you get a shallow retracement, the chances are of a continuation. Okay, when you get to a 50% retracement, your 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 chances of continuation diminish a little bit. Okay, when you get to a 618 your chances of a continuation d diminish a little bit more but there's still a good chance once you get to once you get past the 618 and you get to the 786 or the 88 percent retracement you're not talking about full-on retrace or full-on continuations anymore now you're just talking about consolidative patterns right so anybody who's bullish the Kiwi now that's Typically, it's not obviously all the time. There are situations where you go, you know, you get you get what we call the ABC, AB equals CD pattern, where you go uh, up, down, you retrace to seven, eight, six, then you go up, down, you know, and then you get this A, B, C, D. That happens, but the chances of this happening right here, this situation going on, is not that great once you get down to a seven, eight, six. That's why when you get up to point D is always a good place to be on the short side when you're when you get an A B C D. That's why those work so well. Go talk to Nick Trades if you want to know more about that. Anyway, so if you're if if anybody's bullish the Kiwi, you know they're bullish the Kiwi. They're like, okay, that you know RBNZ cut, and you know I'm gonna get long. They give up below here. That's why that's why there's so many stops below six one eight. So when you break below a 618, it's it's like you have a you have a, a you you're at risk of doing you know not even you you're at a risk of blowing through these and doing a full on reversal, okay. So anyway, um, that's why I feel that today's lows are very important, very 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 important for bulls, okay. Now resistance, any move back up to 7250, you're gonna find sellers. You know, we get we get a rally to 7250. I'm gonna get short the Kiwi. 
okay? Because in my opinion, this is a failed breakout attempt. That's a failed breakout attempt above highs. We're near channel highs and in a, in a, in a, in a big upward sloping channel. I think there's going to be plenty of sellers up there. You can count me in as one of them. All right. Aussie. Now you guys know I'm short the Aussie dollar. I don't think I've been. I don't think I've been quiet about it. I think I've been very um, uh, uh, loud about the reasons why I've been short the Aussie, and I've been the short the Aussie since this week when we got up here. Okay, when we got above 77 cents. Actually, I shorted a little bit below 77 cents, but I've been shorting above 77 cents ever since. Okay, there's the daily and the weekly candles. You can see them right here. Yes, we have a big inverted possible head and shoulder, double headed sh head and shoulder pattern. Yes, we have a big down sloping weekly trend line, multi year trend line coming into play. Yes, we do. If we break above 77.50, it will be mega bullish. I 100% agree and I am fully aware if we get above 7750 on a closing basis it is going to be bullish fully aware of that okay but look at these daily candles it's better seen over here let me way better seen over here I, I don't know the, the MB trading candles are screwed up because of the uh, because of the RBNZ but you can see them pretty clear you know, these are that's a tweezer top, that's a gravestone doji. This is all these are bearish, bearish candles up here. False breakouts above the triangle. Okay. It is it, it, if we break lows today, if we break what are lows? If we break lows today, seventy six seventy, it's bearish. And we're probably going to seventy six cents. This is important. Ooh, whoops, wrong place. Point seventy six seventy. This is important. As is this. Hold on. I had to put an asterisk over here. Okay, if we break those lows, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, uh, resistance. Obviously, resistance is key up here at seventy seven fifty. I don't have to seventy seven fifty five, I don't have to And we're not guaranteed to go down. I mean, I'm, I may be short, but uh, you know, it, th there's no guarantees here. There's no guarantees we're going to have a strong retail sales number. Okay, we are in a range. We're just at the upper end of the range. And as I told you guys on Wednesday, look, it, risk reward at this point is to be short here. Relative strength is diverging as we've been moving higher. You can see RSI has been diverging. Look, the risk reward is to be short here, but we break out. It's going to be a big breakout, and I and I and I will tell you, I am going to be very bullish to Aussie across the board if we break out. I have no, I have no problem switching gears there. Okay. Uh, Dollar index. Okay, so here's the dollar index. You know the good news is about the dollar index. We know our boundaries right now. That's the great news. I, I you know, I, I, I'm not a person that is going to tell you. Um, and and most of you know this from listening to me for the last ten years or fourteen years or two years or six months however long you've been listening in this broadcast, you guys know I'm not one that's going to say uh, I'm predicting this and I predict that and I, you know, we're going here and we're going to go there and, you know, we're going up there and this is this is what's going to happen and, you know, I, t three weeks from now we're going to, I'm not a palm reader, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not a gypsy, you know, I'm just, you know, I, I you know, I look at risk reward. I look at probabilities, and I look at um, you know I, where where can I best risk manage trades based on you know analysis. Hopefully, all falling in the same line, different forms of it. Um, I, but I'll tell you one thing that I love is I love when uh, I love when I have my boundaries set. And um, in the dollar index, I think we have our boundaries set right now. Okay. 
look, I know that this is a strong trend line, and I know if we break it, it's probably going to it's probably going to be quite bearish, right? I know that, and if we break this upper resistance, I bet you we're going to continue to squeeze because I don't think there's a lot of people long the dollar right now, right? So we have boundaries and we have breakout points, and I love that because to me, you can't you can't ask for much more, you know. Like that's a 50% retracement. We know if we break above it, we're probably going to go whoop, start squeezing back up towards resistance. We break below here, it's going to get ugly. So the great news is, is we know what to do. We know when to do it. Just the question is, do you have patience to wait for it? Ninety-six cents resistance. I would say supports right here at that spike lows, these spike lows right there. 95.60. Okay? Easy. Easy peasy. 95.60. Key support, 96. Key resistance. Like I said, do you have the discipline to wait for it? I can't answer that question. Can you answer that question? Because I can't answer that question. Because I know, I I can guarantee you this, guarantee, and I, don't, I can't guarantee much, but I can guarantee you this. Some of you silly people out there are some, some big-time gamblers, and you know what you're going to do? We have 15 minutes before retail sales, and in about 14 minutes from now, somebody that's listening in, if not many of you, are going to go, ah, screw it, I'm getting short the euro, or ah, screw it, I'm getting long the euro, and you're going to just flip a coin, which ultimately will be the end of you in this business. There's an analyst out there in the UK, I'm not going to name names, who takes positions right before news events. It's like, are you freaking nuts? I would hate to see that person at a roulette table or playing Russian roulette. But I won't name names. I'm just saying, you know, like for me, I'll I'll stay short the Aussie. Why? I've got a good cost average. I I I I, I positioned myself for this news event three days ago. I think I'd be short in the Aussie right now if I didn't have a position, just like laying into it short, saying, "Wow, we're gonna have strong retail sales. I'm just gonna get short right now." Hell no! Are you kidding me? That's financial suicide. Good luck with that. And uh, head to Vegas because at least in Vegas you get drinks when you're gambling. They say they're free, but uh, I don't buy that. <laughs> I've been going to Vegas since I turned 21. <laughs> I don't buy that crap. All right, here's the peso. Uh, so the peso came right down to support. Uh, I, I bought it yesterday. I bought it and got run over like Blakey got ran over by a reindeer. Yep. I got ran over by the peso yesterday. That was fun. Not. Again, boundaries set. This is great. Above 1830 gets bullish. We go squeezy, squeezy. And below 1815, and we'll get implodivision. Implodivision is kind of like Univision, but it's uh, uh, implosion vision. Blakey got ran over by a reindeer. Uh huh. Okay. This is, uh, by the way, extremely important support for bulls. Big range. We're at the lower end of the range. Let's go into the Norwegian Krona. Now, this currency pair looks bearish. It does. Um, 
And I, I'll tell you, I don't know if I'm, I don't know, here, let, let me delete everything really quick. I don't, I don't know if I'm a, if I'm a fan of necessarily shorting the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona, but I'll tell you what, the, uh, the, the, um, the Euro Norwegian krona looks like a great short. We looked at it yesterday. Uh, look how important that support is. Uh, I, I, I'm, it's so important. I, I have to tweet it. You guys have to excuse me. I'm, an, I, I got, I got to throw a bone to some, some of the Twitter people out there, right? Eight, twelve, sixteen. No. All right. Um, hold on, really fast. Let me see one thing. You know what? See that RSI right through here. See how that broke? Okay. How important is this support for the US dollar Norwegian krona? I had to, uh, I'm adding Stelios to this tweet because um, Stelios is one of my, um, is one of my uh, colleagues at uh, Forex Analytics. And uh, he has a long-term Norwegian Krona long. Um, uh, and, and I know that this is a very important support for him, so he just needs to see it. But look at that. I mean, that is huge, hugely. Now, let's do a little bit more work here while we're here. Brexit, huh? Huh. All right. Forget that. That doesn't mean anything. Hold on. Low to high. Okay, so we have 127% extension to 1850. I would think that's the last line in the sand for this thing. 18, what, did, what was it? 18, uh, 18 point 1850. That's uh, probably some, you know, if, if anybody's bullish and I, and I don't, you know, I don't know anybody who's, who's buying this thing right now, but if anybody's bullish, they're thinking, all right, if we get below here, I give up, I quit, I'm out, forget it, I'm done. Okay, relative strength is pretty oversold here. Um, So resistance, I, I I would say resistance is right here. 828. Okay. Oh, did I, I keep writing 18. 828, sorry. Let me fix that. There we go. And this is in a range, but we, we are threatening to go bearish here on the US dollar Norwegian Krona. After today... If we if we break lower today, this thing turns instantly bearish. Just so you all know. And and like I said, if you're not if you're not if you're not a fan of uh, if you're not a fan of selling or um, uh, selling the dollar, and you're like, well, I just don't want to short the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona. See if you can trade the euro Norwegian krona, because that looks like a really good short. Here, I'll show you. Euro Norwegian krona. Look at this thing. Tell me this doesn't look like it's just going to crap the bed. It's a big head and shoulder pattern too. I mean, look at that. See, I know I know Stelios, my colleague, is short the Euro Norwegian Krona. Pretty aggressively too, from what I understand. Um, I, I don't know what aggressive for his, him, him is, but I know that he manages a good amount of money. So, um, anyway. 
U.S. dollar Swedish krona. You know, this we've been talking about the eight eight forty to eight seventy four range for so long. Um, I think we really need to just keep adhering to that. I, I don't. I, I'll tell you, eight forty is really big support. This is big support here. As far as resistance goes with the Swedish krona, and you guys know that the the whole thing I'm looking at the the Swedish krona is just this really big, huge um, move here. But it, it, I mean, big, huge uh, flag. Um, so that's why I just try to key in on some of the support because I just don't know how much downside there is. I, you know, if you're a dollar bull, this is the place where you want to be a dollar bull in. Um, but it's like I don't know if today today doesn't necessarily look like the day that you want to be a buyer either. You know? So resistance is right here at 847. Let me just remove this. I don't know what that is. I'm going to get rid of that for now. We'll get rid of that for now too. So uh, eight. Oh, that was that line. This line. Okay, yeah. So for right now, 848 is resistance. 848 is resistance. Um, and this is in a range. Okay, your bias chart is done. Okay, bias chart is done.